Oh hey, it's Wes. And I have been accused of being a Sony fanboy, a Sony shill. And I gotta say that it hurts me. It cuts me deep. No, it doesn't really bother me that much. But what I wanna tell you is that I am well aware of the failings of Sony cameras, just that I still prefer them. Let's talk about eight things that suck about Sony cameras. One caveat, some of these things have been slightly ameliorated with the a7S III, but there's still a lot of work to be done. What's the purpose of making this video? Sony could do better, and I want them to do better, especially now there's a lot of competition out there. So, number one. Electronic first curtain shutter, banding, and okay. I did a video already about banding and the many things that it can cause, but I haven't talked yet specifically about the bokeh. There are some videos about that. When you're using electronic first curtain shutter, which is on by default, and you're up into high shutter speeds, you can A, end up with batting, banding artifacts from flashes using high speed sync, and you can also end up with wrecked, nervous, halved bokeh. It can be a bit of a problem when you're doing portraiture outdoors. Things can get a little bit sloppy. Now, on the A7 series cameras, the silent shutter will give this effect as well at high speeds. On the A9, the silent shutter does not do that. I would like to point that out. It hasn't been really talked about that much that the A9 is immune to it. However, when it's using the mechanical shutter, it's still immune to it. <laughs> so no however there. But all the other cameras, because they're silent, sensor scanning is not fast enough, it can wreck your bokeh. How can we fix that? It would be great to have a setting inside the camera that automatically turns off the electronic first curtain shutter once you go above a certain shutter speed. That would save so much of a headache. I love having it on when I don't need to have the full mechanical shutter because it makes the camera faster and quieter and is less wear and tear on the mechanical shutter. So that's number one, easy fix in software, if not by improving all the sensors to be just like the A9. That's harder. Number two is the screen resolution. These screens have barely changed since these cameras first came out, the original A7, years and years ago, this many years ago. They are so low resolution. This is the resolution. They are not bright enough to be easily visible in sunlight. You can switch them to sunny mode, but that actually alters the color temperature it artificially brightens the image instead of just raising the backlight. Honestly, anything past plus one, as soon as you go to plus two, your image doesn't look right anymore. You have to look through the viewfinder to actually get the real deal to find out what your image actually looks like. They're so inaccurate, especially outdoors in bright light, when often you can't even see them. This is coming from a company that has smartphones with OLED screens and smartphones with 4K displays in almost the same size. I don't understand that. And also, they have touch screens, but they're not sensitive enough, and they don't work as well or as easily. And that leads us into the next one, number three, interface. I want to use this like I use my smartphone. That's a great interface design. On the A7S III, they introduced finally being able to touch the menu, but even then, it's still a very old fashioned menu. They just kind of went to vertical mode. A lot of people were excited about that. I was pretty disappointed, honestly, because number one, they're not making it backwards compatible with their other cameras, even though there's really no reason that they can't do that. They just don't want to be bothered with rewriting those firmware as well. And number two, it's still not an intuitively graphically driven design like on modern smartphones. We've already figured this out for most things. Why can't we do it? for Sony cameras. Why can't we do it for all cameras? Some cameras have it, like Hasselblad. It's not even all that graphical, but it's as intuitive and easy to use. Canon, you can change your settings a little bit more on the touchscreen. I want a bigger, a brighter, a higher resolution, a more accurate touchscreen. These panels are a dime a dozen now. You can get dirt cheap smartphones with panels that are just vastly superior to the ones in these cameras. If you buy an A9 II, you're paying thousands and thousands of dollars. You cannot tell me there isn't just a little bit of wiggle room in the margin for that camera to have a beautiful display on it. Again, they don't cost that much anymore. Number four is the ergonomics. 
Sony caught a lot of flack for that back in the day because the original A7 camera had a grip just like this. The A6100 and 6400 still have a grip just like this. Not a lot to hold on to. Even their latest cameras, the A7R4, A7S3, if you have gloves on, it is very difficult to use these cameras. If you have a big lens on and gloves, I've shown it in previous videos, just normal winter gloves, you cannot get your hand in there. I live in Canada and I spend half the year shooting in frigid temperatures. The cameras hold up fine to these temperatures, but they're so hard to operate these tiny buttons and the tiny handholds. They're getting better, but it's taking forever. Number five is 8-bit video. The A7S III is the only thing that gives us 10-bit. It's so frustrating. You have cameras like the A7 III with S-Log3 that is essentially useless because it's just 8-bit video. I feel like, I don't know for sure, that that could be added through a firmware update to a lot of these cameras. It's really disappointing. Now, I'm just spitting out videos for YouTube here. I would love to have 10-bit video, but I don't necessarily need it. But for professional work, it makes it so much easier to get your grade right if you have 10-bit video. Now, if you get it right straight out of camera or you're just streaming, it's not a big deal. But as soon as you start to manipulate things, it falls apart way too soon. It's time to get rid of 8-bit for all your cameras, Sony. Number six is image stabilization. They were one of the first ones to break it out, and it was great. But it hasn't gotten a lot better since day one. Now you have cameras like Nikon and Canon's mirrorless systems that have gigantic lens mounts and it allows the sensors to move a lot more. Kind of surprises me that on Sony's APS-C cameras, they still haven't improved the stabilization. Sony is kind of stuck here. Although I don't buy the hype that lens design is extremely limited by the size of Sony's E-mount, I do buy the hype that there is an intrinsic problem that you cannot move that sensor enough to have that kind of impressive stabilization. They're kind of in a corner here, and I'm not sure what they're going to do about it. They have some software on sensor stabilization on the A7S III. That's not a great solution, and it can only do so much for you. Number seven is the buffer conflicts. This has always been a bit of a problem. You take a bunch of pictures, then you can't do anything on your camera. Now, they've somewhat solved this by being able to access the, the function menu, and you can create a lot of shortcuts on the body, so that's great. But the biggest thing for me is hybrid shooting. I've taken a bunch of pictures or some video, you can't change or do anything else until that buffer is cleared. Even if you have a tremendous amount of space in your buffer, enough space, I would say, to start recording a video, you still can't do it. You've got to wait. And sometimes you just don't want to wait. I really wish that they would come out with a workaround for this somehow to keep these cameras going. I feel like it should be possible and something people have complained about for so long. Again, it's not as big of an issue as it used to be, but it's still an issue. Finally, number eight, and honestly, this is the one that gets me more than anything else, no lossless compressed RAW. You can shoot compressed RAW, which loses some things, especially in high dynamic range situations or in backlit situations, you can get crazy compression artifacts, or you can shoot lossless RAW, totally uncompressed. On the 24 megapixel cameras, this isn't as much of an issue, but on like the A7R4, A7R3, this is a huge issue. You end up with 100 megabyte photos. After all this time, most manufacturers offer this lossless compressed RAW. It's a great option to have. There's really no reason in this day and age of fast SOC processors to have totally uncompressed RAW. Sony, I know you probably can't do this with a firmware update. It's probably something that has to be baked into the processor itself in order for it to work as effectively as it needs to, but please update to this. And there you have it. Those are my eight things that still suck about Sony cameras. Maybe next time we'll do eight things that are still the best about Sony cameras. So like and subscribe. I hate saying that so much. So follow this channel for more. I've got lots of other content on here. If you have any questions, you think I'm totally wrong, let me know down in the comments. And until next time, go take some photos.